Hello, everyone. This is Greg Gillio with another edition of our weekly video message. This is for Friday, September 8th. Um, I hope you like this uh, new PowerPoint slide. This is one that was created by Susan Rocha, one of our assistant principals. So I'm giving this one a ride. And I think it looks pretty good. So let's give it a shot. Uh, starting off with our shout outs and recognitions. We had a big overall one here for shout out to the HHS community. Uh, this person's son left their brand new water bottle somewhere and somebody turned it in. And so we were able to get it in the lost and found. So a good reminder that if your kid ever loses anything, come to the front office and uh, check in with the lost and found with Miss Nancy. And uh, we we do have a lot of honest kids and there's a lot of stuff that piles up in there. So hopefully uh, they go check that out if they've lost something. Uh, there was also a shout out for Maya Bernicki, who is one of our parents, a longtime parent. And so in quote unquote, her knowledge is greatly appreciated. So thank you, Maya, for helping out. Um, we had uh, also another one here for the homestead staff and students who, um, who, because as we did our first person in person back to school night, they said we did a great job. Thank you. It was a lot of fun. Uh, everyone was so helpful and we appreciate the teacher staying late. They also wanted to give a shout out to the custodial staff for saying the campus was incredibly clean. So glad that uh, you enjoyed that. And uh, we definitely enjoyed being back in person and seeing everybody again. So um, we're, we're glad that tradition is back. Uh, and there was a shout out for Miss Paula Mockler, who is our assistant principal. Uh, and the shout out was for being helpful and on top of things for this person's student who has accommodations through a 504. Um, there was a suggestion from, I believe this is from a student saying they had some idea about uh, adding things to uh, brunch and lunch up there on the quad and doing some dances, events like that, singing, uh, doing some performances. Great idea. And I would love to get that to Miss Kirby. Um, you know, or you can contact her or Ms. Kirby directly. Um, however, if you want me to do it, I, I'd love to get your name. So if you're the person who put this in, can you email me your name or put it back in the survey um, so I can have Ms. Kirby or the Leadership Kids connect with you so they can get the ideas of what that looks like. So glad to have a little more uh, activities at lunch and brunch time. So um, again, hopefully we get your name and we're able to, to work that out. Uh, moving into questions and concerns, where can students safely store backpacks when they are participating in after school sports, a location they can access when their sports activity concludes? So the, the primary place would be the locker room, right? So coaches do have access to that. Um, and so um, that is a place to go in, change, lock it up, and then your coach should be able to let you back in there. Um, there this does create some problems at times because maybe you have a male coach with female students or like in case of track where you have a lot of kids and they're both male and female. Um, but when those things usually happen, the coaches tend to have a spot on the track or field or in wherever they're practicing um, that they can supervise the bags and so put them in a specific place. So just talk with your coach and find out uh, what that might be. Um, some students go home and then come back. So obviously that'd be a good place to store it or maybe they store it in a friend's car, that kind of thing. Although we know not everybody drives, um, but that can also happen. So again, locker room is first. Uh, then sort of a designated area by the coach uh, and then maybe some other arrangement with uh, taking it home or, or having another student store it for you. Um, the person noticed that the front facade of the school was painted over in gray where the Mustang used to be. Are there plans to have a new mural painted? Um, actually, the entire um, library, uh, auditorium, music buildings, those were all painted to have the new color scheme going on. Um, and so as we were getting ready to paint those, we did notice that uh, the murals were getting pretty old and faded. They looked pretty dated, to be honest. Um, so the, uh, the, the choice was to cover them up rather than to repaint them because it would have cost a lot to go back in and repaint those. And so uh, the idea is like, let's go over and see if we can't possibly come up with something new. We don't have any ideas or any plans at the moment, but we do have a vendor that we've been talking to about replacing some of the murals. So that is something that could be coming up soon, but not at the exact moment. Um, one thing we can say is that the marquee that's out there in that spot, we do have some plans to fix that marquee. There's some issues with it, uh, but also replacing that lighted sign. So it'll be a little bit brighter and, and whatnot when we get out there. So we'll we'll see what the plans come, but uh, nothing in the works as of right now. Um, this kind of goes back to last week. There was a question about um, the difficulty of turning left uh, from the student lot. So this person wanted to clarify a little bit more. So the issue of turning left from student lot on the homestead was meant for after school and students who drive. It's really treacherous for less experienced drivers. Anything to help that is appreciated or any timeline for when construction will be done is great. Um, yeah, I don't have the construction timeline. Sorry about that one. I've still been trying to get more info, but I don't have that. 
Um, I, I understand that it can be difficult making those unprotected left turns. It's a problem no matter what. So if your student doesn't feel comfortable doing that, maybe they should make the right turn. Um, the police are not going to station out there, you know, every day at that particular time. Um, that is just not something that they have the ability to do. Um, they do come out at times to help out, but it's not going to be a regular thing. So I would hate for students to, to rely on that. Um, again, either they need to make sure they're being safe when they make that turn or they need to make a right turn. Uh, I, I, we didn't, I don't have anything else to say on that one, unfortunately, um, but uh, we'll see what we can do. Um, <clears throat> there was a concern at the presentation the other night that our college counselor uh, made a mistake, mistakenly talked about early action or early decision for CUCs and CSU. She did make a mistake when she said that. Um, again, if you've ever done public speaking, sometimes your brain doesn't quite match what goes through your or your words or your words don't match what's in the brain. Um, so she definitely made a mistake with that. She's, she has corrected that through her posted PowerPoint. So again, all the presentations that go on, make sure you you check out the PowerPoints that are, are posted to the guidance websites or the college and career website. Um, the ultimate point, which was again, probably a good example of it, although I don't think that's what she meant, um, is that you really should check. Students need to check. If they're gonna send stuff to five different schools, they should check each one of those websites to see what the specifics are because every school does things differently and every, there's a lot of different changing rules. So um, please make sure that you are double checking your work after you send it out there. So again, we apologize for the mistake on that. Um, but it was a mistake and she has corrected it and we're going to be moving on. Um, <clears throat> there was a, a concern brought up that there's not enough shade in the library quad. And this was, they were at the grand opening ceremony and we would agree because um, <clears throat> the quad's not quite finished yet. Uh, one of the things that is going to be two things that are coming through, we're waiting for the light poles. And so if you saw the wooden boxes out there, those are covering the, the bases for the light poles. So we're waiting for those to come in. Uh, and we're also going to have a shade structure that's going to like one of those big sail, fabric sails is going to go over the grass area and over the tables. And so we'll provide some more shade. Um, so that is uh, coming. But again, we we have an arrival date for the end of September of those. So still a couple of weeks away. So it'll it'll get there. Um, also, we do wait for the trees to mature a bit uh, like they did in the main quad. People complained about the trees in the main quad at first and, and said, oh, those, those are never going to give enough shade, but they have grown significantly, the type of tree that does grow rather quickly um, and will help in some areas. But again, the whole area will not be completely shaded. So um, there'll be some sun and some not sun, but uh, there, there will be some more opportunities for shade coming up here real soon. <clears throat> Excuse me, going up for some general information. I um, want to do a shout out to our PTSA who is doing a job shadow day. They're doing that on Monday, October 9th, which is a no school day for students. So it's a perfect day for them to hook up and try and find some information. Um, th this has been a, an ongoing project that they've done. It's been a little um, changed a few times with the pandemic, but they're back to doing it the way, hopefully the way they've done it before. Um, you can find more information if you go here to their website. This is go onto the parent portal, click the PTSA button that's on the uh, right there. And then you'll see all these things that you pick programs and events, you'll see job shadow day, and then it gives you some links and that kind of stuff and more information. So please either just look at this and that'll give you some more information or go to our website, click on those and that'll give you um, give you some more information. Hopefully your student gets a chance to participate. Um, traffic reminders, two big things right now. Um, we're see still seeing a lot of parents and folks coming in and dropping off and picking up in the staff lot. You're not supposed to be in there at any time. So please stop coming in there unless your student has a mobility issue and we've granted you a specific pass. Um, this is just, it's not a place for, for students to be going in. It's creating traffic issues. Um, kids are still going through there. They're not supposed to be walking through there. So we're still trying to train our students. But please, if you're picking up or dropping off kids, that should be the horseshoe the student lot or somewhere else off campus. And then again, also just please slow down. I know people get in a hurry. Um, we're seeing a little bit too much speed going on there. We don't want anyone to get hurt. So whether it's in a parking lot or down Homestead or whichever, please drive slowly and safely. A um, couple important dates coming up here. Uh, we do have um, the counselor presentations to ninth graders in our bio and PE classes starting next week. Um, next week, yeah, next, or two weeks. Um, we have homecoming dance on the 6th. We don't have school, like as I mentioned, on the 9th. Uh, homecoming week is that week of the 10th. Um, there is a common application workshop uh, for seniors only on 10-3. So again, go to the College and Career website um, on our web uh, page on our website, and you'll see more information about that. And just so you know, coming up at the end of October there, right before Halloween, is the end of the first grading period. And so just as a reminder, the grading periods are snapshots. This is where your student is 
you know, anytime you can look on, you know, Schoology and see kind of what their grades are. But we do like to take a snapshot at that point. If people are falling behind, we like to give some notices like, hey, you need to pick up the pace here. You need to turn in your homework or, hey, you're doing really, really well, you know, keep up the good work. Um, so you'll see those kinds of uh, things there. It's not a final grade. It is really meant to be sort of a progress report just to say, this is how your student's doing or not doing. And so again, it's coming up pretty soon. Um, so that's a good chance, time to say, hey, you've got a couple of weeks to make sure your grades are getting in, in, in line. So for some of you athletes, this is what some of the grades we start to pull to, to look and see if you're going to be eligible to play. Um, so please, good idea to make sure your grades are up. Um, and that is it for this week. I did not have a guest speaker this week. Sorry about that. I will have one next week. Um, but hope you enjoyed our new uh, PowerPoints um, background there. Thank you, Susan, for doing that. Thank you, everyone. We had a lot of people turning in um, survey responses. So please keep that up because that's what helps propel the information that comes through here. Uh, thank you again to everybody who showed up for back to school night and the grand opening ceremony this week. A lot of fun. Uh, looking forward to doing that more uh, throughout the years. Uh, and looking forward to seeing you all uh, in the days to come. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week. Take care.